Yesterday, I was watching FNF, as I'm known to do, and Myron brought up this story of Matt Ariza, a punter, or at least the ex-punter for the Buffalo Bills, and his wild case that went on, and I'm trying to cast my mind back to when all this stuff happened, because I remember seeing the story, I didn't realize that this was all the way back in August of last year. And then also consulting my own archives, it's like, okay, this is a story that is completely up my alley. Like, I totally would have hopped on this, but for whatever reason, like, this is the story that nobody wanted to touch. Like, I know the accusations, or the allegations, rather, are absolutely absurd, which is normally, you know, perfect fodder for me. Like, hell, I was, you know... One of but a very few people that believed the Trevor Bauer stuff, that he was totally innocent, which, you know, three courts and you know, three legal proceedings ended up finding that, yeah, no, um, n nothing happened at, at all whatsoever. The only people to have found something worth suspending him over was MLB. Kind of like what happened with the NFL in regards to Matt Ariza, so shout out to Myron and Fresh and Fit for putting this story on, because it definitely prompted me to go back and rediscover this stuff, so we'll just run you guys through everything that happened, uh, through the timeline right here, give everything a nice, complete overview, because it definitely deserves it, and this guy, uh, hey man, he's found himself in a Trevor Bauer type situation, and uh, it, I, it just... This is what happens. This is what happens when there are zero consequences for somebody trying to run the pockets of a famous person. Somebody who has status, who has clout, who has, who has easy money. And when they're an easy target and they don't have that RP awareness, knowing that if you stick your dick in crazy, there is going to be consequences. Just because it's easy box doesn't mean that it's the box for you. Buffalo Bills made the right decision releasing Matt Ariza, but serious questions remain. This is from Judy Batista, who you can take a look at her Twitter feed on your own time. I went and perused it to see if this is any kind of an ethical individual, and uh, uh, of course not. Of course not. But this was her take right at the time when all of the information was out there. All of it, including none of it, but the Buffalo Bills released rookie punter Matt Arise on Saturday night. So this was August 27th. I went and checked the date. Buffalo Bills, yes, released rookie punter Matt Arise on Saturday night. At worst, the allegations contained in the civil lawsuit filed Thursday. Civil lawsuit. Hmm. So, okay, Um, we'll get to the claims, but keep that in mind. The civil lawsuit filed Thursday that Ariza, a former San Diego State star, star punter, yes, held quite a few records that were over there, and that's why he ended up getting selected by one of the AFC's standout teams. I think they made it to the AFC Championship, or at least the semis this time, for this previous year. But regardless, you know, they're going to be a very good team for a while. But anyways, participated in a uh, pulling a train on a 17-year-old uh, last October has proven true. See, okay, in, in the words of Julie Batista, it doesn't even matter if it's proven true. The fact is, the allegations are there that he did stuff to an underage chick, him and several other people as well, but he's a numero uno when it comes to the civil lawsuit. Civil lawsuit, huh? Okay, so if all of this horrific stuff happened to this chick, why is it not criminal? Just wondering, just wondering. Okay, so so yes, um, participated in yes pulling a train on a 17-year-old. October or last October is proven true, and there will be many questions about how the university, the San Diego police, and those who are supposed to be veteran players in the NFL let Ariz Ariza go unscathed for 10 months. Well, it's almost like it's almost like there was nothing to hold anybody accountable for. Now, me, I'm a part of the camp that believes that, you know, if anybody actually, beyond a shadow of a doubt, does commit the crimes that are alleged here, don't even waste the cot space. You can draw your own conclusions, what I mean from there, but at best, Ariza was the cliche every team hopes to avoid as the season is about to start a devastating distraction. The Bills could not afford to put up with even the best case scenario that he's been falsely accused, which, spoiler, spoiler, there's almost certainly much more to be learned by the Bills' response to Ariza about what they knew and alleged 
of the alleged incident, but how deeply they pursued answers, but whom they relied on for their information and investigation. NFL franchises are not investigative bodies, but they still will be the ones that ultimately end somebody's career off of the tears of somebody who's being shielded interesting as the buffalo bills general manager brandon bean noted during a news conference saturday announcing the move teams don't have to mean or don't have the means to pull all the facts together sorry what oh okay oh you've been legis sorry you gotta go you gotta go but the past cases tell us that teams often seek answers from people who will tell them what they want to hear yeah that's why you had somebody who said i didn't do this and then they just sided with a chick trying to run somebody's pockets interesting but here are the allegations they're spicy they are numerous and these were the accusations that made headlines at the time matt arises accusers says piercings were ripped out during the alleged train reveals bruises okay reveals bruises a year later Interesting. An 18-year-old woman who accused former Buffalo Bills punter Matt Ariza and two other San Diego State University players of running a train as a minor. Wait, as a... Okay, well, okay, it happened a year ago. Also, keep a pin in that. Said that she was left bleeding after the alleged assault took place at an off-campus party in October. In the interview with CBS, the unnamed woman... See another reason why it's a civil case? She doesn't have to provide her name at all whatsoever. Hell, when I was doing the Trevor Bauer stuff, even though, even though there were uh, allegations, there was a police report filled out, Lindsay Hill never had to provide her name at all, and in fact, she was shielded from the media. Oh, when everything ended up coming out in a civil court setting, which Trevor Bauer ended up winning, oh, we don't publish the names of victims, so already presupposing the verdict interesting stuff but yes the unnamed woman said her phone was taken from her and the piercings were ripped out when ariza 22 and two of the other college teammates xavier leonard and uh powell one a couple of dudes xavier leonard and powell I, uh iwalakalu okay sure wonderful fantastic okay but i i don't know the race of those guys uh, names kind of lead me to believe that they're a little bit darker than Ariza, and that's also going to play into this as well. Okay. The incident allegedly happened on October 17th at a Halloween party. Well, October 31st is to hell. Anyways, at the home where Ariza had been living. I reported it the day after it happened. I was 17 years old, okay, and I had no idea who Matt Ariza was. It happened at his place. I had no idea who he was. You were trying to get put on by going to the football team's party. Okay. You were going to drink underage. Come on. Come on. Obviously. Horrific if this happens. Spoilers. It never did happen. But you're underage. Trying to go to a party. Trying to go to a frat party. Where you know the only thing that's going to be happening is a whole bunch of drinking. A whole bunch of drugs. And a whole bunch of fucking. Like you're putting yourself in a situation to fail. That's what you're doing. So even still knowing that all of this is eventually going to be proven to be fictitious. Don't put yourself in situations to fail like that. Uh, as her face was hidden during an on-camera interview. CBS News. Okay cool. So she can go ahead and uh, weave her web of lies. The CBS News. Interesting. But yes I showed photos of the victim's neck and legs which had bruises okay fantastic and again just put cast your minds back to the trevor bauer stuff Lindsay hill had bruises and all over her face neck and chest interesting i was crying and my friend asked me what happened and i told her i had just had a train pulled on me okay those are the bruises that you get from um professional football players the next day interesting interesting according to cbs news the woman wrote in her journal the next day oh, okay cool we're taking the word of a journal fantastic all i keep replaying in my mind is being face down ass up that's the way uh in the lawsuit filed on thursday the victim claimed she went in and out of consciousness during the alleged you know train ariza was released by the bills two days later buffalo bills general manager brandon bean announced saturday i was having to deal with this horribly traumatic experience that i never asked for the woman said never asked for you went to 
Whatever, Arise's attorney, Carrie Armstrong, maintained that his client was not involved in the alleged assault and said the allegations are fueled by money, which, guess what? Spoilers! That's very much, very much the case. Because now, now we can fast forward to the current day and how Matt Ariza, former NFL punter, is trying to clear his name after, yes, it's something that's going to linger with him for the rest of his days. Like Trump, like Tate, like Bauer, like everybody else, Kobe Bryant to a certain extent, Mike Tyson, who we debunked and went through some stuff on Rumble a uh, last week. Yeah, last week we took a look at that. Those accusations stay with a guy forever, forever. There is no equivalent for a woman. The way society wants to prop up single mothers, like that's the only other one that immediately comes to mind. It doesn't even matter if she's a gold digger. Oh man, then that always just goes back on the guy. Oh, he's just being a simp. And you know, she was just, she was just getting her own bag. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. When a guy has any sort of sexually charged accusation placed on his name, he's immediately ostracized from society by a bunch of simps and a bunch of ill-intentioned women. That's just the fucking way that it is because there is no way that you can clear your name afterwards. That's why I'm saying, you guys, you have to move right. You have to keep thorough receipts as best as you can. You can't let this stuff linger because, yeah, for the better part of, what, the better part of a year, this dude has had one of the most horrific tales we er, weaved about him. And now, too little too late. Let's call it exactly what it is. Do you think that he's going to get a fair offer from any any NFL team in the near future? Yeah, I hardly think that's going to be the case. In an effort to clear his name and get a job, former NFL punter Matt Arisa has sent NFL teams a piece of evidence that reveals several startling facts about what happened the night he was accused of um, running a train on a 17-year-old girl in San Diego. There's an audio recording of a meeting December 7th when the San Diego County prosecutor met with the woman and her attorney. It's 101 minutes long and was not released to the public. But USA Today Sports obtained it recently and then interviewed Ariza and the woman separately to break it down in detail. In the recording, the prosecutor gives a point-by-point -point explanation of why her office never charged Ariza and the others with any crimes. Oh, interesting. Isn't that a bit of an... Uh, it's definitely a helpful insight that we have right there. And as to why there's a civil case because what do you end up winning at the end of the civil case do you end up getting justice nah you end up getting a payday interesting rises agent joe linta said he sent the recording to about 20 nfl teams in hopes of getting rises career back on track after the buffalo bills released him amid the controversy last august the question is what they will make of it and if they find oh and f and if they will be willing to give him another chance not until the case is ultimately dismissed, because oh, this is kind of detrimental. At minimum, it paints a different picture of what happened compared to the other shocking allegations that came out against Riza and two other former San Diego State football players last year in the pending civil lawsuit filed by the woman's attorney. The recording references nine brief video clips. Nine video clips of the woman's sexual encounters that night. Sexual encounters? As in plural? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, this bitch was out there popping pussy for anybody who wanted it, okay? There was no coercion here whatsoever, none of which showed Ariza. Wait a minute, none, none of which showed Ariza. Oh shit, what? Oh wow, imagine that. Somebody who made it to the NFL and somebody who didn't get brung along ends up filing a lawsuit because, oh, she didn't get put on afterwards? Wow, big shock, big fucking shock. Who was denied wrongdoing and says the recording is huge, it's huge, it's fantastic, it, it clears my name totally. His attorney said he declined uh, an offer from the woman's attorney to settle the case for $50,000. Run his fucking pockets. That's all she wanted. That's why there's a civil case that's out there. That's why somebody who ended up going a choo choo one night decided that, oh my God, you know what? Hey, she woke up in the morning realizing that, oh God, I'm not going to be taken seriously. Well, uh, looks like it's time to start breaking out the Kleenex and going, I, I didn't ask for any of this. Oh, I remember. I, I just bruised this off of my body. I just did it. Yeah, see, that's what ends up happening. Latent and obvious fucking regret. And until, until these spurious allegations end up getting punished, until there are repercussions and that there are negative consequences for anybody just bringing, obviously, 
false allegations on somebody's name, this shit is going to continue to happen time and time and time again. Nine clips. Nine fucking clips. That's what this dude, that's what this disgraced punter, because that's going to be the label on him, because the media can't think of any other new fucking terms to lay on somebody's name. Why is he disgraced? Because some chick, he wasn't even a part of the allegations that she laid at his feet, even though she was laying for somebody else, thought that could land her an easy payday. Yo, man. Uh, I know the teams know the true facts, or as I told USA Today Sports. They've heard the audio. They know it isn't true, and that we need to... Oh, we need the public to understand as well. Because I think uh, teams have the fear that if they sign me, there would be a little bit of backlash because the public has been told things that aren't true. The woman, now 18, has a different view of the recordings. I don't think that it exonerates anybody by you trying to say that the guy who was the conductor of the train, who was pulling the Amtrak out of the station, wasn't even there, doesn't exonerate anybody. I felt like, hmm, interesting. That's what we're going on. That's what we're going on. And then also the revelation that, yeah, you just wanted to settle this for a quick 50, 50 bands. Come on, come on. Where did this recording come from? Well, good question. San Diego County District Attorney's Office invited the woman and her attorney to a private meeting where the prosecutor told them they had decided not to file criminal charges in relation to her allegation against Ariza and other San Diego State football players. At least two recordings were made in the meeting, but the recording and the details in them were not released to the public. The District Attorney's Office instead released a general public statement later that day that said the evidence didn't support filing charges in the case. Interesting. It didn't get into any facts about why not and in, in keeping in the policy with her office. In the interview with USA Today Sports, the woman emphasized that she was intoxicated to the point of not being able to consent to sex and that the video clips show only a fraction of what happened that night. Oh really? Oh really? So the stuff that you know helps you out, that wasn't caught on, er, that wasn't caught on camera. Not because, you know, the cameras weren't running or anything like that. It's just because there was nothing to capture on camera. You were a hoe. You didn't get what you thought you deserved out of being a hoe. And now you're trying to wreck some people's life because you need a born again hoe story. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. She said the video didn't add up oh, to around 30 seconds out of sequence that lasted more than 90 minutes. Come on. It didn't just... Uh, I... I just don't think that it's fair at all to look at these short clips that were already way into the assault already happening and make a judgment on that and say that that was consensual, she said. Well, that's fantastic. She cried when Dep er, Deputy District Attorney Trisha Amador, interesting, she's, yeah, oh, she cried. Oh, she cried. Well, that makes everything better, right? <sighs> told her no criminal charges would be filed, and the meeting resumed, and Amador discussed the evidence, which included four terabytes of data. They have four terabytes of data. Uh, all, all we seen was the the short the short clips, and they don't back anything up. She ran. She ran the evidence. More than thirty five taped witness interviews, a physical exam of the woman, and nine video clips that were made that night to the woman's sexual encounters. Sexual encounters. She was trying to find somebody that would take her to the promised land, but didn't realize that. Oh. It's kind of like a simp. If they lead with their wallet, they're not going to get any attention. They're not going to get the respect of the woman that they're simping on. A hoe is never going to get the response, never going to get the respect of that high value guy. Sure. Yeah. He'll come back again and again if you're just handing it out for free. But this is why you have to move smarter in today's day and age because these types of crimes, these civil lawsuits aren't in your favor, gentlemen. The woman started to watch the video clips near the end of the meeting, hoping to fill in the gaps in her, uh, of her memory that night but then she changed her mind and told amador to stop playing them yeah she couldn't come up with a good enough lie on the fly i could just ha i i could have just not reported this and probably been happier well yeah of course because oh i i just thought that i could easily lie and then i can get some criminal cases but hey man because the lower standard for evidence in a civil case well i might as well get some free money out of this the woman said at the end of the meeting i'm sorry amador said I'm like i'm sorry that's fantastic what did the video clip show well funny you should ask amador and district attorney investigator ted mansoor said the video clips showed sexual encounters with san diego state football players pa iwakoli okay on a couch in the living room and apparently two other men in a bedroom oh 
Oh, okay. They were obtained via search warrants that came from the accounts of e, uh, e, Iwalico, sure, and the other SD, uh, San Diego State University player, Xavier Leonard, according to the recording. They are point-of-view clips, meaning they were apparently filmed by the men having sex with her. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay, interesting. So they had clips, or rather, they had full tapes that were out there. And, um, yeah, if you're going to be commit, if you're going to be running a train, a non-consensual train on somebody, why would you record it? I'm just wondering, okay? That doesn't really seem to be the most intelligent way to go about things. Amador notes that the clips did not show her passed out. Oh, no, but no, she was just black. It was all the stress, I, th I think, and that she insisted what... Oh, and that she instead was actively participating in the encounters and appeared to know at some point she was being videotaped. Oh, oh, that, that, no, she just doesn't remember that. Shut up, shut up. Okay. And the clips didn't show evidence of her being forced. Oh, that's why she was crying. Was like, oh shit, they actually caught that. Fuck, okay. Uh, because of what's in the video, I can't prove a forcible sexual encounter, Amador told her. Yeah, I, I can't spin this anyway. You're kind of fucked. Like you were on these tapes. You want to see them again? Prosecutors determined Ariza, a sixth round NFL draft pick last year, which for a punter, unless you're Ray Guy, not that bad, not that bad, was not in these video clips based on the physical characteristics of the men shown. They're black. Ariza had left the property before then. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Interesting. I don't know anything about the rest of the football careers of the other two gentlemen that have been named in this. Who, uh, I had no idea. I remember what she said. I have no idea who was there at all whatsoever. I couldn't identify anybody except for those three guys that were out there. Yeah, no, for sure. They were definitely there. But Ariza had already left the party before then. He had already left. He wasn't there. He was not there at all, according to testimony from a witness and timestamps of the video. A witness also said that the woman was approaching men at the party, asking to have sex with them. Wow! Oh my god, you're on the football team? Oh my god, you get, uh, are you gonna get drafted? Okay, uh, over there is an empty bedroom. Yeah, bring your friend, it'll be fine. <sighs> It's alleged that one of those people uh, that you approached was Pa. Oh, if she had a Pa in her life, uh, then she wouldn't be making these terrible decisions. And made that statement to Pa, and that is something uh, that was heard by a separate incident wit or separate independent witness. Oh, so she was out there just trying to fling it around. Interesting. Very interesting. The woman said she didn't know she was being filmed. That's supposed to make it better? That's supposed to make it better. And doesn't trust a number of witness statements. Of course, she doesn't trust anybody that doesn't corroborate her obviously false story. She said she has no recollection of asking for sex. Fantastic. How was Ariza involved? So far, so far, it doesn't look like at, uh, at all. Ariza admitting to having sex with a woman that night during a call with a woman that was recorded by police a few days after the party. Oh, it happened at the side of the house. Oh, but, oh, oh no, the the train was inside, so she was already throwing it back for the boys. Reza said he never went inside, disputing the woman's lawsuit, which said she, oh, he led her inside and threw her on the bed face first. But, yeah, yeah, exactly. I had no idea who it was, but it was definitely that famous guy who plays for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, he was 21 at the time, and the woman was 17, leading to questions about whether he committed statutory, yes, uh, train pulling on a minor. Here's where it gets even more ridiculous. Uh, like Ariza, uh, Iwalico and Leonard also admitted to having sex with the woman, said that it was consensual and denied wrongdoing, according to the records on the case. Ariza voluntarily submitted a DNA sample into the you know, train investigation, but DNA samples don't prove anything if the men linked to them have admitted they had sex with her. Why? You could also clear up if there's other, you know, samples that are in there as well, and she's only admitting, oh my god, it was just, I don't know how many guys were there that night, but... Come on, man, you should probably just put that out there. It's like, okay, yeah, all three all three samples were present. Same with three other ones that we can't identify. I don't know. The issue is whether or not she consented to it or was capable of consenting to it if she was intoxicated. Yo, just look at the way that these laws, quote-unquote laws, are actually being extrapolated. Amador also said the woman's friends, this is the DA, by the way, uh, friends uh, who were at the party that night gave witness statements. Oh, I don't trust them. They're your friends. I, I, I don't trust my friends.
Okay. One of those friends said that shortly after the woman arrived at the party, the woman left and came back to tell her friends she just had sex. Yo, if you have any friend, girls, ladies, the 20% of you that are out there, if you have any friends that are like that, if you have any hoe friends, they belong to the streets. You can go ahead and leave them out there. It's cold out there. Don't, don't hang around with hoes because they will just take you down a very dangerous path. Okay. But yes, back to this, uh, apparently with Ariza, according to the timeline constructed by the district attorney's office, you appeared to be having fun and that the encounter on the side of the house with Matt suspect Ariza was consensual. Amador told her, Oh, Oh, so, um, was she playing a fun game of see how much I can fit in my mouth? Oh, oh, okay, cool. Uh, the woman reiterated to USA Today Sports, she doesn't trust the witness statements. Yeah, but, um, they got video, video footage. So do you not believe videos either? Oh, okay, cool. We don't really care what you have to say at this point in time. He should face accountability for what he did that night and admitted to doing. She said, it was wrong. I was 17 and I was drunk. That sounds like a you problem because you were out there throwing it around for everybody, but... It's also interesting as well when you factor in she was also telling other people and other people that were interviewed. Uh, she was saying that she was 18 years old. So she was lying as well. And even still um, in, in California, there are things called Romeo and Juliet laws. So they're totally fine. I'm sure they'll clear it up right here. It was wrong. I was 17 and drunk, regardless of whether the DA was able to prove it. It was wrong. Morally, sure, yeah, you shouldn't be running around fucking underage kids. I think that's a pretty good standard that society should live up to. But if you're infiltrating a group and you're throwing it back for everybody and you're telling them that they're legal, you're being aggressive about it. Well, they're only guys at the end of the day. So yes, what about statutory train pulling? This is a big issue with Arises last year since he essentially admitted to having sex with a 17-year-old girl. But the suspect is not guilty of a crime if he reasonably believes the woman is 18 years or older. I might have spoiled this. Arises said he believes she was 18. He, uh, I'm still going to end up not pronouncing this guy's name right. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing Arisa correctly. Uh, Iwaliko and Leonard were 18 at the time of the encounters with her. Okay. I... I have to be able to prove that they knew your age, Amador told her. Amador said, witness, who was in the house, gave a statement saying that the woman told the people at the party she was 18. Oh, oh, okay. I don't believe everybody. The other 13 witnesses that were, I don't believe anybody. Amador also noted that the video from the uh, different party from back then showed the woman saying she was 18. Oh, okay. Suggesting it would be hard to prove the people uh, should have known she was younger. Yeah, exactly. This isn't like two midgets in a trench coat saying that we're 18 years old. This is a 17 going on 18 year old girl saying that I'm 18 getting drunk. All the markers are there. It's like, okay, cool. If she, if she's partying and she's down, what the fuck is wrong? Okay. Woman's lawsuit filed against Ariza in August states that she informed Ariza that she attended Grossmont High School. Yeah, they're 18 year old seniors. Just saying. Implying that she was under 18. And again, I'm born March, March of 1990. I was a senior in high school. Guess what? For half of the school year, I was, well, I did about a you know, quarter of the school year. I was 18 years old. I was a legal adult. This was in October. Highly likely, man. Highly likely. Amador brought up the woman's alleged mention of Grossmont High School in her civil lawsuit, but the woman denied saying that. Oh, of course. No, that was not me. See, it's everybody else except for the liar. The woman told USA Today Sports that she told Ariza she went to Grossmont, which can be interpreted to mean Grossmont College. Oh, which is about seven miles from San Diego State University. Oh, oh, very interesting. He's like, what school do you go to? And she's like, Grossmont. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. You're at a college party. That's what you would think. I didn't say my age at all. And nobody asked me. She told USA Today Sports. Oh, that kind of contradicts with what everybody else was saying. Matt didn't ask me. None of the guys asked me. Nobody at the party asked me. So I just wasn't prompted and I didn't answer. So yeah, there's a, all of the markers, everything that's there. You're fucking around. You're drinking. You're offering sex. There's a reasonably 
high degree of belief that you are of the age of consent. So again, this is a textbook example of somebody who just has regret on the day, who wants a quick 50 Gs. So there's a little bit more to that USA Today article where they go and, you know, speculate or speculated on a couple of other things. It's like, okay, so how can this victim end up proving that the guy that didn't do anything to her can actually be held accountable for the, her concocted fiction? Feel free to read through the rest of it. It's fairly extensive and through gritted teeth, the USA Today actually did some decent reporting, but a little bit of an update on Ariza's behalf. Former Aztec punter Matt Ariza files claim alleging SDSU damaged his reputation, which, yeah, if they didn't stand up for him, if they didn't have his back on this, well, you know, hey man, turnabout's fair play. Former star Aztec football punter at... Er, Matt Ariza has filed a claim against SDSU, alleging that someone tied to the school made uh, statements that damaged his reputation. University has returned the claim, citing reasons, including insufficient evidence. Oh, really? Ar Ariza is one of three former Aztec players accused of sexually assaulting and then, oh, a then 17-year-old girl at an October 2021 house party near the campus. District Attorney's Office announced in December no criminal charges would be filed, according to an audio recording. Recording, nothing happened. Through his agent, Ariza issued a statement this week saying that they are aware the facts of this case have been made public. I'm deeply gratified that the thorough work of the DA's office in San Diego and all the witnesses that were willing to come forward and tell the truth. I'm thankful for the facts of this case as provided by the witness will prove that what I have been saying from the beginning is, in fact, the truth. I can only hope now that people will assess me on the facts and what, and not on what has been falsely claimed in either the civil suit and in the press. And yeah, file, er, filing a counter lawsuit against everybody who defamed and uh, helped out in that action as well is the next step forward because I don't know if he'll ever get a job in the NFL again even though everything is provably false, but everybody will have that, you know, brain dead take that, oh, well, this is just going to make victims, it's just going to be harder for victims to come forward. Stop lying and then people will believe your story. File charges if you have evidence and if you did some dumb ho shit the night before, take responsibility for it, hold that L and move forward from there and stop trying to litigate away your problems, you fucking 304s. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.